Okay. Uh, I think that's the first Secret Service escort to the stage. Uh, there's another member of my security team, and he'll be up here at the end. Uh, good morning, Cornerstone. My name is Trent Inglesby, and uh, it's an honor to lead you in communion today. I attend uh, Cornerstone here with my wife, Jana, and boys, Evan and Drew. Uh, I led communion one other time several years ago, so to be consistent, I'd like to start with the same family photo that I used last time. <laughs> that drawing is courtesy of Drew from maybe third grade, but... As you can tell, the boys have really grown up. Uh, not boys anymore, more like young men, it's probably more appropriate. Um, we've been assigned to sit in this section over here, and I feel like if we sit somewhere else, we get sent to online church for a month. <laughs> a little bit of punishment. Well, I always enjoy listening to people give communion, and I always have something I can relate to, so today, hopefully, you can have a takeaway or something you can relate from my mind today. So as I was contemplating the task uh, and what to discuss, a topic kept coming up and on my mind and heart to share with you guys, and that is the future. Speaking for myself, I think of the future as periods of time, and it starts after today, so there's chunks of future after today. So here's my list for reference. Trent's time tears. Okay. So the great thing is today, so we're not going to talk about that. We're going to go with the, uh, the short-term future, which I feel is from tomorrow till about two weeks. And then we have the mid-term future, which is two weeks to five years. And we have a long-term future. It goes from about five years to 20-plus years of retirement. It kind of depends how old you are, how you relate to that long-term future. And those aren't exact cutoffs, but that's kind of where my mind's at. I think as people, especially in developed countries like the U.S., we love to plan for those three futures. What's next? Plan, plan, plan. I feel like the short-term future is the daily grind of living, you know, shopping, homework, food, social events, sleep. But some of that grind is intentional and has a purpose to help you move towards things that you have planned for in the midterm future. Maybe that stair steps and you, your midterm future might be something like finishing college, going on a nice vacation, or saving money for a house. And likewise, that midterm future will hopefully lead into some long-term future plans, with next steps that might be career advancement or getting married. So for today, I'm going to represent those futures with a snow globe. Now, I'll call it a DIY snow globe, more of a snow jar. Um, so this represents your future. Imagine your future's in this clear area. Let me get my fingers out of the way. Very clear. Um, but like I said, you have college scholarship, buying a house, those are futures that you might see in this globe slash jar. And hopefully you, you have a happy thoughts in your future. Hopefully they're good things. It's always clear until it isn't. As we all know, sometimes our future gets a little cloudy. That college scholarship, maybe you had an injury in high school and that's in jeopardy. The, the house you wanted to save for, maybe you, didn't, you got laid off at work and no longer have the funds for going towards that goal. But as you know, over time, we those clouds and glitter and snow will settle out and you can have a clear vision of your future again. But what happens if the snow never settles and the clouds persist? What if you're in a constant storm that obscures the future? What happens if you have a life-altering event, such as the loss of a loved one? a seriously ill child. An unexpected medical diagnosis. That life-altering event not only hides your future plans, it can shatter them. Your futures are no longer possible. What now? What do you do? 
In these situations, most people tend to retract, pull in, focus on the now, the today, because tomorrow and beyond have changed. Those broken futures mean nothing anymore. And there's great sorrow and grief for the futures that were lost. Maybe you know this feeling. I know this feeling. I told you about the three futures I think of, but I intentionally left one off my list. The most important one, the eternal future. That future is promised to us if we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We cannot plan our way there, for it's already been given to us. Jesus tells us that through all the trials and tribulations in life, he is with us. We can lean on him and his love to help us reconstruct our future. All of our earthly futures that we plan for, they're all they're grayed out now on that slide. They're fleeting. And that sentiment is clearly stated in James chapter 4. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this city or that. Spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do need to not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Our earthly futures can be stripped away at any time as we have experienced ourselves or seen it lived out in others. But our eternal future is permanent, rock solid, and waiting for us. It can withstand all the snowstorms in the darkness and prevail. Here's a new snow globe. The future is a little cloudy in this too. Hard to see. You maybe kind of see it. But it's, it's clear. It's hard to see until we remember to trust in Jesus. Trust the sacrifice he made for us. Trust in the cross. Let other people see and say it looks like a crooked cross to the side people. When you trust in the cross and see that cross, it will give us clarity for the most important future. Will the servers please come forward? On the night when he was betrayed, he t wait, Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also, took, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In 1939, C.S. Lewis delivered, <clears throat> delivered a message to the students and faculty at Oxford University. This was during the early days of World War II. At a time when the future was grim for most people, he had this to, say regard, this to say regarding the future. A more Christian attitude, which can be attained at any age, is that of leaving futurity in God's hands. We may as well, for God will certainly retain it, whether we leave it to him or not. Never, in peace or war, commit your virtue or your happiness to the future. Happy work is best done by the man who takes his long-term plan somewhat lightly and works from moment to moment as to the Lord. It is only our daily bread that we are encouraged to ask for. The present is the only time in which any duty can be done or any grace received. When you get down to it, our control of time boils down to today and the eternal future. All those in-between futures are still good to plan for, but not guaranteed to be fulfilled. 
Expect to have some snowstorms in your life, but remember to keep your eyes on the prize, the cross, his sacrifice, and it will help you endure hard times and give you hope. Know that our future is not in this world, but in heaven. So make today count, and use some of your time to take steps to secure your eternal future. Pray, read the Bible, be a light to others, share your love of Jesus. Thank you for your time.